Hello, everyone. Today we are speaking once again with Sue Miritans. She is a certified Eden Energy Medicine trainer, a certified Eden Energy Medicine practitioner, and a certified Healing Touch practitioner. Hello, Sue. Hello, Tammy. How are you? I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Yes, you too. Thank you so much for coming back to talk to us again. And we'd love to hear a little bit of information about where you're at now in your journey. Before we start, though, we have to tell the listeners what just happened when we first met. So we oh do, my gosh, I know. I love it. We do recordings on Zoom. And as I've shared before, Karen, who has passed away in uh, November of last year, she shows up to me with a heart and I see hearts all over the place. I see it in the form, in the shape of in snow, in leaves, just hearts. She comes everywhere as a heart. And when we met today in the background of my room, the sun was shining through in the shape of a heart. I even took a picture of it. I'm going to post it on the Facebook page so that you can see that I'm not losing it, that there actually is a heart there. And Sue was a witness to it. I'm a total witness and it was absolutely beautiful. And once it was acknowledged, it disappeared. It disappeared. Isn't that funny? I knew that we got the message. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so Patty has been gone for how long now? Eight months. Eight months. So Try not to count, but you do. <laughs> absolutely. I find you do that a lot right at the beginning. It's, it's this many days and that many days. And I'm finally, my dad and I are finally at the point where we don't count Dave's passing. We don't, my brother, uh, we don't count my mom's passing, how long it's been. But yeah, we're, we're past that portion of the grieving journey, I think. <laughs> no, obviously, you mentioned... Funny. Yeah, obviously you mentioned the big days, it's, it's this many years or whatever, but not as much as these many hours anymore. I know, it's a tough one. And and everyone has, unfortunately, everyone will go through it at some point in their life. <clears throat> and, um, and and Tammy, these, these podcasts are helping us go through them. So thank you for doing them um, because it is for, yes, it's for you, it's for me, but it's for everybody and uh, people are all benefiting from it. Mm -hmm. Your invitation to speak um, with you again prompted me to, I mean, even the invitation prompted me to sit down and think about, yeah, what is up? Well, how am I feeling with Patty? Because you know, you just kind of go on with your life and you try to make best you can. And so just sitting and thinking about it was uh, quite, it was cathartic. It was healing in and of itself. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how have things shifted and changed since we last spoke? Uh, we last spoke about six weeks after Patty had passed. And I was, I thought I was pretty good. Yeah, I, I was, I was, you know, managing and it's not as though Patty and I had seen each other every day, especially with COVID. I'd seen her a few weeks prior, but especially with her cancer and illness, we were all being very careful. But in hindsight, I realized through thinking about our conversation today that I was still really angry and I was at a, okay, I'm going to do something and I, I signed up for a course and because Patty had said a couple of days before she passed, she said, so just go for it. Sometimes you just got to go for it. So I, I'm doing this in your honor, Patty, because I want to, I wanted to honor her life somehow. And I wanted to make a difference. And there's a lot of anger. And, and I find that it, the, the anger has morphed into more of a sadness. Um, it's, there's still something missing and there's still very much a gap. And I think I think of her every day through something I see or a memory that I have, but uh, it's morphed from, from an anger and more shock. It's down to a sadness. And um, I still smile when I see Cardinals because I know it's Patty. Um, I just told you that my daughter gave me a stained glass Cardinal for Christmas. And I, 
you know, be, I put it right on my kitchen window. So when I do dishes, there's Patty. And so it's, it, um, I'm not sad all the time when I talk about her or think about her, because I talk about her a lot. Um, but I'm still sad. Mm -hmm. I still, but it, but it also made me think I have a relationship with Patty. Uh, you have a relationship with your brother and your mother. And in order to have a relationship with someone, they need to be alive. <clears throat> Excuse me, they need to be, they need to have life. And they need to, I mean, it, the way that I feel Patty has life is people still talk about her, people still have, they do things for her, they, I mean, we'll have a tree memorial, uh, you know, stuff, things like that, that keep her memory going. Uh, and so she's part of my life. My relationship has morphed with her through, through time and it will. Uh, but when I talk about her, it's not a downer. I talk about her. Oh my gosh. Remember when we did this or uh, Patty and I did that. And, um, There's still a sadness though. There's still a sadness. I don't think the grief will ever go away. Yeah. Uh, I and don't, I don't. Have, people have said it's it, not that time, that time heals all wounds, that type of uh, analogy, but it doesn't in, how do I want to say that? Time does help, but it doesn't release it. I listened to a really interesting uh, um, interview. And this was after you had asked me to come and speak with you. And it was an interview on grief. And it was by, it was with Tammy Simon, who has, she's CEO of Sounds True, interviewed um, David Kessler. And he is a grief counselor. I'm sure that a lot of people have heard of him. And I hope they do, because I was, I was really, uh, it was a wonderful interview. And he said that um, grief doesn't go away. And you don't, well, I don't really want the grief to go away. I don't ever want to stop missing Patty. But healing is when you remember that person more with love than with pain. And I really liked that because I'll never forget Patty. And I'll always be sad and I'll always be grieving for her loss or my loss of her and my physical life. But I remember her more and more with the passing of time with love and uh, not, yeah, the happy times. I remember the happy times and the fun times and the, and the intimate times with conversations and I'm remembering her more like that around that grief that kind of is in the center of it, but it's growing. Mm -hmm. Does that, does that image make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I can fully relate with that as well. Yeah. Both, both your loss as well as the memories of love, which is, makes it so vitally important. Uh, Kessler also said that there is no meaning in in death i mean there's no meaning you can't find meaning in it but he said that meaning is what we do with that grief and and what we do with our life after to honor their life and you know the healing and it's not forgetting it's when you can start living your life that will honor them. So you're going back to being more full of life, you're more full of joy, um, more loving to other people, and you are loving again. That will honor their life because I think we all know people who have passed, they want us to be happy. They want us to love. They don't want us to wallow in their in sadness um, because they love us. They want to see us moving on. And I like that. Um, he, the, the city of Hamburg, he gave this story. I bear, I'm a total image person. The city of Hamburg was bombed during the Second World War. It's in Germany, and it was heavily bombed. And it is quite a modern city. 
and relative to some of the other places in Europe, which are hundreds of years old, not like in Canada. Uh, but he was visiting and said, where, why is everything so new? But they had reconstructed the city since the massive bombing. And he asked, where is it? Why is everything new? He said, oh, you should go to, I think it was St. Joseph's Cathedral. I can't remember the name of the church, but it was in the middle of the city. It was totally decimated, but they had left it there. And he likened grief to the city of Hamburg. Hamburg is, you know, in the middle is this scarred, sad, uh, very, very, um, well, it's a grievous situation that the war happened. And all around it, life had happened and life had grown beyond the sadness and the sorrow that happened that was represented in that church. And I think that that's the way that our loved ones want us to be. They want us to grow and expand, but it will grow around that sadness. We'll never get rid of the sadness. And in a way that made me feel really good because I will, I know I'll never forget Patty. I don't want anyone to tell me to, oh, you know, I know it's tough. I know it's right. You got to move on. I will never forget that and that relationship in my life and what she brought. I'm just growing around it and I'm growing because of it. And that was very heartening to me. Mm. I hope other people feel the same. Yeah, I think it's something that you, well, you grow into it, <laughs> really. Yeah, you do, for sure. Yeah. And sometimes it takes longer than others. And and I do not believe, and I'm sure, and I know other people have said on your podcast, there's no time specific. There's no, you know, order specific. There's no actions that everyone needs to do. It's a lot of honoring uh, yourself. It's a lot of respecting yourself. It's a lot of loving yourself. And people do find their way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In time, for sure. Now, you are an Eden Energy, certified Eden Energy practitioner, mm -hmm. and saying that we, there is no actions. But there are some things that we can do to help the body to release the grief because when grief gets caught in the body it can cause some real havoc within is there something you can think of that listeners might utilize to help to release the channel of the heart or to open the channel of the heart and help them move through a level of grief physically yeah, I mean I can always talk to anyone about even energy medicine. I, I love it. I just, I'm passionate about it and, you know, don't get me started. You can cut me off whenever I'm sure you'll edit stuff out, but absolutely. Yes. Um, I was, I was thinking about exercises that I did and I would recommend and have recommended to clients when they are going through a grieving process. And there were, several that I could sh share with you but I'd like to share I I wrote up four actually which might be too much but anyway I wrote up four that I really wanted to focus on but before I do that can I give a little background as to why and explaining a little bit more about energy medicine so it makes more sense I think if people understand why they're doing things they're more likely to do them and they're more likely to have a greater impact. And that's the purpose of this podcast. Yes, please do. Okay, so energy medicine, like Reiki, like you know, healing touch, uh, sound therapy, it's an umbrella term for a healing method that works with our energies, uh, the, our body's energies. And it works with our body jet energy systems to heal the body. And healing means to put the body back into balance and flow, the energetic body back into flow. Eden energy medicine is very much premised on traditional Chinese medicine. And traditional Chinese medicine and Eden are a very integrated approach. So they say that the mind and body operate in a, a dynamic loop, so to speak, where the mind 
such as thoughts or feelings or emotions impact the physical body and the physical body can impact the mental body. So I think we all get the mind body connection, but I'm gonna give you a couple of examples just to really make it that much clearer. When you fall, say you, I mean, my brother-in-law shattered his shoulder and the pain was phenomenal. And he was on constant painkillers and it, it was just so difficult for him. And I remember him saying, Oh my God, Sue, it really messes with your head after a while. If you're in pain and you can't sleep and you can't get comfortable and you can't do anything and you really don't want to eat and it is constantly on your mind, it will mess with your head. I think we've all experienced that. But alternately, mental, how does the mental or the, the thoughts, emotions affect the physical? Well, the common and the really well-known is stress. I mean, we all know how stress impacts the body and it's the greatest culprit. They say it's number public health enemy number one in the States, and I'm sure it is in Canada too. And we're all familiar with, oh, we're stressed. We get increased stress. So our heart pumps faster, our metabolism slows down, and that's a potential weight issue. <clears throat> we breathe faster. <clears throat> excuse me, our blood pressure goes up. So that's an example of <clears throat> emotional impacting physical. Sorry, I have to drink. <clears throat> traditional Chinese medicine and Eden Energy take this a little further. And they've linked actual specific emotions to specific organs because they see this emotion elicits this kind of physical symptom. And, you know, they see it again and again and again. For example, if someone's a nonstop worrier, um, it impacts the spleen meridian. Now, a meridian is just an energy pathway. It's not saying it's hurting the spleen, but, but you can get constant fatigue if you're worried, loss of appetite, you could have poor digestion, anger, is affiliated with liver, the liver meridian. And anger can be seen in headaches, depression. You could have a really stiff neck or shoulders. You could be dizzy. It's very much related to anger. But we're really interested in sadness and grief. And sadness and grief, the Meridian that is affected by sadness and grief, grief, yes, the heart is because heart is about love, but lungs also, lungs are the, the organ that is often impacted by this. So this can be seen in um, chest tightness or shortness of breath, um, allergies, uh, greater sensitivity to food. It can be dry skin and it could be excessive crying. So that's also very heart related. And when the lungs are impacted for a long enough time, it also can affect the large intestine, which can get into elimination. So you can have bowel disorders. So emotional absolutely gets lodged in the body. And you know, it's one thing to say, oh my God, all these things are going on in the body. Um, we know that exercise makes us feel better I mean, because we're physically moving our body, but we're also moving our energy systems. Donna Eden, who's the founder of Eden Energy Medicine, she created exercises that help show our energy systems in the body uh, what way they should be going. And we kind of get them back into a balance and, and proper flow pattern that they, that they normally should go. Um, because we know that our physical impacts ener our energy body, but also our energy body impacts our physical body. One example is our energy, one of the most favorite patterns our body has is crisscrossing. So the right brain controls the left side, the left side controls the right side. We're familiar with that. Let's take it a little further. 
when the energies cross all over the midline of our body. And when that doesn't happen, the, and the energy only runs straight up and down, we physically are not accessing all of the energies that are available to us. We're not getting on the right side, we're only getting energies from the right side. We're not getting them from the left and right side. So when we go, you know, exercising and we're taking one arm to the other side and one arm to the other, everyone feels better after exercising an exercise class, a yoga class. You could say a very big part of it is because we are crossing our energies. Nine out of 10 people who have energies that run up and down in Eden energy, we call it homolateral. Nine out of 10 people are clinically depressed. Oh no, maybe I should flip that. Nine out of 10 clinically depressed people have energies that run up and down. So a very simple technique to show the energies. Okay, this is the way you go, crisscross, crisscross. It's a very simple thing to do. It's a very important thing to do if you are in that state. So but our focus here is sadness. And lungs and heart are the systems that, that these exercises mostly that I'm going to show you uh, relate to. And they're all so easy and unbelievably powerful, especially unbelievably if you don't get the whole energetic thing or if you don't really buy into it because it's a little, a little off there. It is not weird. It has been totally proven by science, by quantum physics, by science. It's been validated with all kinds of meta studies. If you look it up, it's just still not mainstream. It took a long time for the earth is not flat to become mainstream. The earth is not the center of the universe. I mean, it just, it's a shift in perception. Even if you don't really, really get energy medicine, you can still benefit from doing these exercises. And I would encourage everyone to try them. And the beauty, but also the frustration of energy medicine is that it is so subtle. It goes to the core of the issue and it will mend the reason behind the problem, especially if it's pain or something, but it doesn't happen overnight. If you have arthritis and you've had it for 20 years, it's not a couple sessions are not going to take away the arthritic pain. But if you work with the body for an extended period of time, six, eight, 12, depending on how, you know, long you've had the problem sessions, it, it's incredible what can happen. So the exercises. You want to hear the exercises? Yeah, let's go there. <laughs> I'll try to explain it so you know everyone can follow through. Um, so if I get a little anal with all my words, please excuse me. However, um, the first one I want, I'm putting them in order of what I, can, I actually started going one, two, three, four, and then I went no one two, four, three, then I went one, 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 all of them are really important, okay? Mm -hmm. I want people to, first of all, take a deep breath and just, just breathe, take a nice, big, big, deep breath. And then take your fingers and put them under your armpits. You know, when you're really cold, put them under your armpits. That actually feels good. They are cold today. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It's freezing out. So, and your thumbs, put them straight up on your chest. They're resting on your upper chest. And I just want you to take three to five, and I mean, time it, 30 seconds of deep breaths. Take a breath in as though you're sleeping breath, not the, take a nice calming breath in. What you're doing is you are, your thumbs are on the beginning of the lung meridian. 
and your thumbs are the end of the lung meridian. So you're looping energy in through the lung. You're also, your baby fingers are the end of the heart meridian and your armpit has the beginning of the heart meridian. So here with these nice, relaxing and calming breaths, you are giving energy and sustenance to both the heart, which is hurting in time of grieving, and the lung. And I love this exercise. You can sit like this and just say, my hands are cold. No yeah. one has to know. This is the way that people would sit and you, you, if you were to look at them, you'd be like, they're so closed off. Look at them. <laughs> but look but at how- It's interesting. They are. <laughs> people aren't closed off. Um, Donna Eden, it's like, that's the, the last thing that people do when they feel they need this, what they're doing is, and you're also crossing your energies. I mean, this is like a triple whammy, let me tell you. <laughs> but if you're feeling really sad, like if you sit like this when you're watching TV or on a bus or on a subway when that happens again, and you know, at a certain point, you got to look after yourself before you got to worry about what other people think too. But this is one, and I, I, there is no name to this. This was, um, it's, it's a lovely one. And, and actually Prune Harris is a Eden energy instructor and Eden energy medicine person over in UK. And, and she did this when she actually had COVID because she was supporting the lung meridian as well as the heart, because it's pretty scary. So that's one. The other one that I thought was really good was when Patty first passed, it really was anger. It's like, what the hell? Like, seriously. And, and there's an exercise from Eden Energy called Expel the Venom. Now, this isn't a, um, I don't, I'm not in love with the name because venom sounds so awful and poisonous, but you could also say expel the anger um, expel the frustration, but it's that anger, frustration versus sorrow and sadness. And there is a difference of emotion and what, and this one is also really good in the middle of the night when you can't sleep just as a sidebar. But what I do is put my hands out in front of me with my palms open up, face up, and I put in the palms of my hands whatever is making me angry and you can't blame the person for dying but there's an anger that I have that my friend passed so I'll put whatever is making me angry and I'll even say whatever is making me angry whatever is keeping me awake in the palm of my hand and then what you do is you close the palm into a fist and you swing your arms above your head behind you and you throw your arms down in front with your hands open. So you're throwing the whatever it is that you had in your hand down to your ground. And, and if you do that, you do that three times with, with real force, the first three. And I like going shh, like it's shushing someone, like it's a shh and it's going out. And the fourth one, you do the same thing slowly and you are releasing the energy that's not serving you to the earth and and it will dissipate and transform into something more positive uh, but in the meantime you don't have it in your body and doing that you can do this two three times a day you're never going to overdo energy medicine um, and it will take out that excess anger what it's also doing is it's taking out excess energy because when you have too much energy in a, in a meridian, there's an imbalance. And what these exercises are trying to do is bring our bodies and our energy bodies back into balance. So that's the second one. That's called expel the venom. The, the third one uh, is, well, it's all about grounding. 
And I was speaking with a friend who has suffered tremendous loss in her life. And she said, I, I said, so what did you do? She said, oh, I used to go on walks all the time and going for a walk can be very grounding. Eden Energy has some grounding exercises that you can do when you cannot go for a walk. And the reason why we want to ground, which in grounding is feeling connected to the earth. So we're not in our brains. We're not, you know, totally uh, in our heads. We need to be, we are body as well as, as mind. And what we're doing is we're grounding to the earth. We literally are grounding our energies with the earth energies. We receive energy from the earth. Um, listeners may know we get chi is our life force energy. And a lot of that life force energy comes up through the earth, um, through various acupressure points in traditional Chinese medicine and even um, into our body. And one way that you can uh, ground and also support your, like there's many ways to ground, but this is a, it, it's grounding, but it's also very supportive of our, our entire energetic system. And it's called the hookup. And grief can send you spinning. Grief can send your mind just in all kinds of directions and it's and it's sometimes you just have to get centered you have to get grounded so what you do this is going to sound very strange to some of you but it is an extremely powerful and an extremely basic move in even energy you take one third take your middle finger and put it in your belly button and you take another middle finger and put it in between your eyebrow eyebrows and that's the third eye and what you do is you kind of push in with a little force and then you push up with a little force you don't put, move your hand up your forehead just push in and then push up and you take again three to five to seven to ten to 118 breaths however many long deep breaths you feel you need before you can feel a little calmer. And some people yawn when they are when they are grounded. So this grounds you to Mother Earth and centers you and calms you. But it also, you're hooking up two really important energy flows around the front of your body and the back of your body. And just like we have a physical backbone that kind of helps our bones stay in place, we have an energetic backbone. And when the energetic backbone is flowing and in place, it helps all the other energies flow and in place. So that is, that is why this particular exercise is so basic. It, it impacts everything. And physically being in and energetically being impacted will obviously impact the physical. And I know four is too many, but I had like 10 as a list. So I, I just couldn't cut this one off. And this is called the human touching the divine. And this one is uh, particularly uh, close to my home heart because I've done this and I have benefited from it uh, in tough times, in tough times for sure. So what you do is you have, well, first of all, I do, I start all my energy exercises with my hands on my thighs and take a deep breath. So that in and of, in and of itself is very grounding. And then what you do with this is you take your arms and you reach up to the sky in like a V position, not dissimilar to the one that we did last time, but this is a different one. So you take your arms up to a V position. And what you do is you um, breathe, take a deep breath in. And when you take this breath in, realize that 
to all the goodness of the universe coming down. And then move your hands in front of you as though you're hugging the tree and put your hands almost together, but don't quite touch them, the fingers. And when you pull your hands together, make the sound that a balloon is letting air out. And then you open up again, open up to the goodness of the universe. And then again, breathe to make the sound, bring your hands almost together. So when you're opening up to the heavens, you are, it's like a surrender. It's like you're letting go, you're surrendering to a higher being, a belief, a faith that there's something up there and you're just letting go. And when you're bringing your hands together, <clears throat> imagine that you are bringing all that you hold near and dear and loving close to you and close to your heart. And then you open them up, your arms again, and you're letting it go. <clears throat> when you do this three or four times, the last time when you're bringing everything close to your heart that you love and hold near and dear and want to protect, put your hands together and slowly bring your hands over your heart. Knowing that what you have close to you and in your heart is safe, but also knowing that when you surrender to a higher force, you have faith that it's gonna work out. And what you're doing here on a more physical level is you are opening your lungs. You're also opening your heart. And it's interesting, lung and large intestine, where I mentioned before, are connected. And they fall in the um, traditional Chinese medicine. They fall in the autumn element. You know, we have fire, you know, we have spring, summer, fall, equinox, and autumn. Autumn is a time when leaves let go of the trees, let go of the leaves. They surrender to the cycle of life. And I've always found it very interesting that lungs and large intestine, it's all about letting go and it's all gonna be fine with the cycle of life as long as we can continue on with the cycle of life. Absolutely, which is basically the journey of grief, right? Yeah. We live yeah. With life, yeah. yeah, beginning and end. So, yeah, so that's number four, Tammy. <laughs> Oh, that was I hope that wasn't too much. It's it's too much makes it confusing. But honestly, I mean, if anyone has questions, I I'm all on. I I could chat forever, and I love to tell and share with this because it's so powerful. I really believe everyone has the right as well as ability to learn and do these things um, physically. If you can't do them, if people do them mentally. Um, it's this it's it's just as good you know? yeah so if you're an all, it, all inclusive practice it can be applied absolutely yeah, it is thank you so much for sharing sue if people did want to have more connection with you to discuss eden energy medicine or maybe get trained on how to utilize some of this stuff themselves where would they go we just froze tammy oh so did you you just froze <laughs> yeah Oh, okay, so I'll say that again. So if somebody wanted to find out more about yourself or about Eden Energy, where would they go? Well, I expect that by the time this is aired, I will have a website up. But in the meantime, if they go to EM for energy medicine, EM with Sue at gmail.com, they can email me and I would be so pleased to explain this further or talk with them and 
know, there's this, this is just like the tip of the iceberg of what, you know, energy medicine can do for people and they can do for themselves. So perfect. Thank you so much. We'll put that in the show notes so that people can find it. Thank you for spending some time with us today, Sue, and for these valuable exercises that I hope people utilize and hopefully makes them feel a little bit better. I know. Well, my best wishes to everybody. And uh, thank you, Tammy, for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Bye. Bye. -bye.